these things. These things are shaded pole induction motors and you find them everywhere. I mean, they're mostly in fans actually, low torque applications, these are in microwaves and fan drives, that kind of thing. I think they're lovely. They're cheaply made, mass produced, and really cute and every time i look at these i think what on earth am i going to do with them mostly what i do is steal the coils out but i wanted to give it a go doing something more and it struck me that they may in fact make a switch reluctance generator so that's what i'm going to try and do now i came across this two of these actually they're essentially the same thing only the coil in this one has been potted so it's got a potted coil in there and then the rest of the motor is sitting outside. Let's have a close-up of the components of that. So here's the fan in one piece. There's the actual induction motor right there. And there's the fan housing. That fan housing is made out of an envelope case, which is kind of cool. And we'll probably use that for something or other. Then there's the actual rotor, which is that there, the fan rotor. Then we get the motor itself, and the motor itself is this big block you can see, that's it. Got a couple of brackets on that motor with bearings in them that go either side there and there. And running through the centre is this, which is the rotor itself, and it's induction rotor. Now you can see those lines, they're aluminium lines, and they join up on these two aluminium plates here, and that's where the induction circuit is, between two of those lines and that plate, and that's what sets up the alternate field. Now when we look at this, we can see the shaded pole right there, and that helps create the rotating magnetic field. So if we take that support off, the plan is, chop through here, chop through here. We have a look at this one, be a little clearer. You can see that the rotor sits in a thin piece of metal. We want to remove those thin pieces of metal. That might be a bit of a challenge in the pot. Stick a couple of magnets here and here, and then take the rotor and cut the rotor into a bar. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, that's the modifications done. You can see what I've done. I've just chopped out that bit. So it used to be solid and I've chopped it out. I've removed the poles they just pull out with a pair of pliers and I've cut the central rotor into this bar shape, which will go in there. Now all I have to do is put everything back together. Okay, and that's it back together and it's still nice and free spinning, which is no surprise, and close tolerances. And there's the cuts. You can see that we break the flux path. Now all I need to do is stick a couple of magnets in here and here and see if we can actually generate something from it. So there are the magnets right there and because I had all of this I actually put it back on so I put the fan back on. It's an involute so if we blow some air in there we should get some real speed out of this and I've hooked it up to the voltage. We'll have a look at the voltage in a second. But that's the advantage of these um, reluctance motors. The rotor is always much much lighter so it can turn much faster and as it turns much faster of course it produces more. Now there is something else to note about this. It is in fact just two poles. Normally on these things when it's a switch reluctance you put four poles so you're swapping the north and the south. On this one that's facing north, that's facing south, two poles. Remember there's an iron core going through a coil here, we've already got flux going through there. So what happens when that rotor comes up to that position is we create an alternate flux path. So the flux actually here diminishes but doesn't disappear. So there's still a bit of residual flux in there but it's enough to actually get it to generate by changing the intensity of the flux by giving it a lower reluctance flux path through that rotor, even though it's a two-pole device. That's amazing, actually. So it's two-pole, two-pole, instead of the normal four-pole, two-pole, or four-pole, six-pole. Well, anyway, let's have a look and see what it can do. So that's one and a half volts already. 1 1.7, 1 1.8. That's awesome. So that got up to two volts, say, eh? well, 1.97 or something like that. That is really actually awesome. It's a prototype device meant for looking at it that it's interesting. So the amps are going to be sort of, you know, milliamps, really, because remember the coil in this thing, um, what I'm looking for, there we go, the coil in this thing is lots of fine wire, so the resistance is going to be quite high. But it works. We can take a shaded pole induction motor, make a couple of cuts at it, and change it to a generator. 
I thought that was kind of awesome, actually. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching.